Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sara Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa returned to the kingdom following his private visit to Al Dhafra region in the United Arab Emirates. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received a cable of congratulations from the BDF Commander in Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, on the 52nd anniversary of the establishment of the Bahrain Defense Force, which falls on the 5th of February. In reply, His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, sent a cable of thanks to the BDF Commander in Chief. His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received at his residence in Germany, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who visited him to be reassured of his health. His Royal Highness expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, for his visit. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, congratulated His Royal Highness, the Prime Minister, and wished him abundant health and happiness. His Royal Highness said the Prime Minister praised the efforts of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, and wished the King of Bahrain lasting security and stability as well as further progress and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received a cable of congratulations from the Commander in Chief of Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, on the 52nd anniversary of the establishment of the BDF. In reply, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince, also sent a cable of thanks to the BDF Commander in Chief. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa visited Technip FMC on the sidelines of His Royal Highness's official visit to Italy. Upon his arrival, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and his accompanying delegation were welcomed by the Chairman and CEO of the company, Douglas Ferdhart. During the visit, His Royal Highness outlined Bahrain's progressive or progress towards achieving its energy goals, recognizing it as an essential component of the Kingdom's long-term development plans which are being led by His Majesty the King. In this regard, His Royal Highness highlighted significant modernization projects that are currently underway across Bahrain's oil and gas sector, most notably Bobco's modernization program, the BMP, which is the largest project in Bahrain's history. The Crown Prince then noted that Bahrain continues to deliver sustainable growth by repositioning its economy as a smart oil economy, emphasizing that investing in technological innovation in the oil and gas industry broadens investment opportunities and strengthens the national economy. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince concluded by underlining that increasing collaboration in the oil and gas industry presents a unique opportunity to boost economic growth and further strengthen Bahraini-Italian cooperation. Later, His Royal Highness was briefed on the uh, Technip FMC strategy and uh, the BMP's progress before meeting ambitious Bahraini engineers training with the Technip FMC.
Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King, President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, attended the ceremony to announce the winners of the sixth edition of the Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa Global Award for Women's Empowerment, which was held at the Aisa Cultural Center. Her Highness, Her Royal Highness, affirmed the progress that has been made in the field of the empowerment of Bahraini women, which she said now represents one of the main features that make Bahrain the prosperous and modern country. It is under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. Her Royal Highness praised uh, the contributions of Bahraini institutions uh, that are, they are making and they are public or private or civil in addition to the efforts of various distinguished individuals, all of them having helped uh, to turn Bahrain in its regional as well as international role model for others to emulate. She expressed pride in the practices that have advanced of uh, the causes of women's empowerment, including those of the institutions and individuals who have participated in the competition, and said that such efforts also help in shaping the standard according to which innovation ideas are measured and applied. She underlined that these efforts contribute to the overall strategy of sustainable development. Her Royal Highness then honored the winners of the prize. The winner of uh, the place in the public sector category is the education and training quality authority in the official institutions category the Shura Council and the Economic Development Board and the private sector category the telecommunications company Zain in the civil society category the Bahrain Society for Investment Specialists and in the individuals category Aisha Mutar who was nominated by the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities for her part the general secretary of the STW Halal Ansari affirmed the message of Her Royal Highness and expressed gratitude for Her Royal Highness's direct Directives to involve in the, prize, in the prize since its first edition, which Al Ansari said has resulted in better policies for equal opportunities on the national level and an increased level of productivity among female employees.
The Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Global Award for Women Empowerment was set on goals to strengthen women's stances in all fields globally. These goals are columns that support women-oriented efforts tailored to different communities and feeding into solving diverse issues to set a precedent to issues faced around the world. We'd like to start by thanking Her Royal Highness Sheikh Sibicha bint Ibrahim for supporting women and for actually passing the empowerment stage and now we are in the progression stage. And um, it's all about teamwork. CFA Society Bahrain is blessed to have an enthusiastic team and we have 50% of our board of directors is comprised from women. 44% of the management of the, of the society is women as well. We have a lot of initiatives and uh, all the thanks goes all to the volunteers who are dedicating fully their time and you know committed to the society so we have the Mutamahin program which is a training program for the fresh graduates followed by uh, providing them with internship we have the Qudwa program which is a mentorship program and we have a research challenge program which is training the the future generation of the private and uh, sector for the financial analysis and we have also some um, events that we do which are educational conferences networking conferences and so on these main goals of the award are to encourage national efforts aimed at empowering women in member states of the united nations and activating their role as equal partners in advancing inclusive development providing an opportunity to publicly acknowledge the achievements of institutions and individuals in the area of women's empowerment. Also, maximizing the impact of methodologies for integrating women's needs and development paths and achieving equal opportunities for the status of women's progress. Several initiatives that we highlighted as part of the program. So, for example, we have a paternity leave, which uh, was actually one of the first of its kind in, on the island uh, for men to be able to take off uh, around the time well, they can do whenever the child is born, up to a year after the child is born. Uh, the second was the nursing room, um, which is one of the, the better fitted out nursing rooms. Again, like I mentioned in the press conference, we have a high percentage of women and we would never hear the end of it if it was just a closet. The third is is really, the, the and I think this is the one that actually impacts on productivity and, and, and flexibility, is flexible working hours. We are all set up to work from home, should the needs arise, and our human resources policy allows us to do that. Also, to publish a message to the world, starting from Bahrain, the importance and the effect that it has on achieving social stability and comprehensive development. Her Royal Highness, wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, received the winners of the award in the presence of UN Representative Dr. Moaz Dreid and a number of members of the award committee. Her Royal Highness congratulated the winners and affirmed the STW's keenness to further stay in communication with them. She expressed his, her appreciation to Dr. Moaz and expressed her pleasure in the UN continuing to work with the STW on the second edition of the award and added that this is a great opportunity opportunity to exchange expertise. She stressed the importance of holding a media campaign to conduct a promotional advertisement for the second edition of the award. Her Royal Highness said that the first edition of the award required a lot of efforts by the STW and the UN, which took three years of work to reach the aspired results, which paved the way to work on the second edition and benefit from the first experience. She praised the strong relations between the STW and the UN and expressed her desire to enhance this cooperation in order to enhance the role of women. Her Royal Highness then listened to a brief on the initiatives of the winners and wished them further success. The winners expressed thanks and appreciation to Her Royal Highness for honoring them and holding initiatives that support and empower women. They affirmed that this honor will motivate them to achieve on an international level, praising the wise directives of Her Royal Highness.
His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa deputized the Commander in Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa to attend the ceremony which His Royal Highness patronized to distribute housing units to the BDF affiliates in Salman Town in the Northern Governorate. At the beginning of the ceremony, which coincides with the 52nd anniversary of the BDF, the Field Marshal was received by the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Abdullah bin Hassan Al Naimi, Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Dia bin Sagr Al Naimi, Under Secretary of the Ministry of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, along with other senior officers from the BDF. The ceremony commenced with a recitation of the Quran, after which the Director of Supply, Lieutenant General Ali Al Naimi, gave a speech. The Field Marshal then distributed the housing units and expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa for his royal directives to make suitable housing available to citizens. He said that among the distribution of housing units represents a part of the services that are provided to the BDF affiliates along with loans, construction, renovation and other services in appreciation for their efforts. The field marshal congratulated the officers and affirmed the keenness of the BDF to support all of the affiliates whose efforts he said represent a source of national pride. The BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa patronized at the BDF General Command a ceremony to confer the medals awarded by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, to a number of senior BDF officers marking the BDF's 52nd anniversary. The Chief of Staff Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagr Al Naimi and the Defense Affairs Ministry's Under Secretary Major General Sheikh Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa were present. The Commander-in-Chief conferred the Order of Bahrain of the First Class on a number of senior BDF BDF officers. Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa conveyed greetings and appreciation from His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander, to the honored officers. He also congratulated them on their honoring and lauded their dedicated work and high morale, wishing them further success in their military career and in serving the kingdom. The Commander in Chief stressed that thanks to the directives of His Majesty the King, the BDF has become a fortified shield that protects the homeland and preserves its gains, noting that it is equipped with dedication as well as authentic Bahraini and social values. He added that the BDF is among the strong pillars that support the kingdom's development and progress march. The commander-in-chief indicated that February 5th is one of the utmost important in the BDF's history, recalling the tremendous efforts exerted by His Majesty the King to establish Bahrain's brave armed forces. He asserted that the BDF has reached the highest levels of military and administrative development thanks to the dedicated efforts of its brave personnel. 
Earlier, His Majesty the King issued Royal Order 5 of the year 2020, granting the Order of Bahrain of the first class to seven senior BDF officers. His Majesty also issued Royal Order 6 of the year 2020, granting the Medal of Military Merit of the first class to 42 officers and the Medal of Military Merit of the second class to 327 non-commissioned officers and personnel. The Kingdom of Bahrain celebrates today the 52nd anniversary of the establishment of Bahrain Defense Force. The BDF was established to be the solid shield that maintains the security and stability of the Kingdom by enhancing the combat readiness and defense of its members and affiliates with the constant support and direction of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander. The BDF members exerted their efforts ever since the establishment, following the directives of the BDF Commander-in-Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and worked on enhancing the integration and joint coordination among all units through extensive training, professional combating abilities, which highly proved their capabilities inside and outside the kingdom. Since the establishment of the BDF, the BDF assumed its patriotic role in maintaining the security, stability and sovereignty of the kingdom, as well as its firm stances towards brotherly and friendly countries and operations outside the kingdom in order to establish global peace. The BDF has not neglected to pay attention to its members in the various units and weapons as it works integrally with the various development agencies in the kingdom to provide all basic services including adequate and comfortable housing and create ways for a decent life and high living standards for them in order to achieve sustainable development for the kingdom of Bahrain. The celebrations continued marking the 52nd anniversary of the BDF to include a number of activities and programs. The anniversary is uh, dear in the hearts of the members for its uh, being filled with memories, especially to the graduates of the first bash in 1969. This occasion is a source of pride for the people of Bahrain during the prosperous era of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, who built the BDF and supported the efforts of the BDF Commander in Chief Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa. The BDF today is a symbol of giving and protection due to its patriotic firm stances inside and outside of the kingdom. The Council of Representatives extended its congratulations to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa on the occasion of the 52nd anniversary of the establishment of the Bahrain Defense Force. The Council expressed its pride in the capabilities, professionalism and battle readiness of the BDF, which it said has proven itself uh, through its sacrifices, efforts and determination in protecting the country as well as through its participation in joint efforts with allied countries to preserve the security and stability of the region. The Council affirmed its absolute support for the BDF and expressed thanks to appreciation to the BDF Commander-in-Chief, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, as well as to all affiliates of the BDF and prayed for the souls of those of the BDF who have sacrificed their lives in the service of the country and the Arab nations at large. The Council also affirmed its position on the Palestinian issue and expressed its full support for all efforts that push towards a just and comprehensive solution through which the Palestinian people will retrieve all of its legitimate rights, will establish a Palestinian state and will maintain its commitment as a strategy. The Council also underlined the importance of Arab peace initiatives and international law as a basis for peace efforts. And finally, the Council called on the international community to meet the obligation in protecting the rights of the Palestinian people. The Deputy Premier and Chairman of the Ministerial Committee for Development and Infrastructure Project, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, received Emirati Minister of State for Food Security, Maryam bint Mohammed Saeed Harb Al Mahiri. Sheikh Khalid expressed his aspirations for this visit through the Memorandum of Understanding, the MOU signed by the two sides to increase cooperation, exchange expertise, and experience information and studies in the fields related to food security. The Deputy Premier stated that food security is an important interest. To his Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, which is uh, followed up by the government headed by the Prime Minister, His Royal Highness Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and supported by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He emphasized that the Ministerial Committee is following up on the development and implementation of the strategic project for national food production to include the allocation of multiple sites for fish farming and plant production with the aim of developing national capacity 
capacities in the field of food industries and raising the proportion of local production and maintaining local expertise to be an important part in the success of these projects. Sheikh Khalid noted that the Emirati Bahraini partnership in food security as a new dimension and vital field for the existing bilateral cooperation and coordination as a result of the keenness and interest of the two leaderships. The minister or minister Al Mahiri affirmed Bahrain's advanced status in the field of plant and animal production, which can be developed through exchanging experiences between specialists in both countries and holding joint training programs aimed at preparing national caterers specialized in the field of food security. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, met the Minister of Foreign Affairs and International Cooperation of Italy, Luigi Di Maio. The meeting took place on the sidelines of the official visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to Italy. During the meeting, Sheikh Khalid welcomed the strength of ties between Bahrain and Italy, stressing that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's visit has consolidated this bilateral relationship to the benefit of both countries and their people. Sheikh Khalid and Di Maio discussed ways to develop joint cooperation coordination between the two countries on regional and international issues of common interest, as well as developments and updates on topics of mutual interest, including the situation in Libya and relations with Iran. He highlighted the importance of addressing various challenges and further enhancing regional security, peace and stability in line with the interests of countries within the region. Sheikh Khalid and Di Maio went on to sign an agreement between Bahrain and Italy on exemption of visa requirements for holders of diplomatic service and special passports. The two sides also signed further agreements regarding air services, an agreement on cultural and educational, scientific, technological and informational cooperation and a memorandum of understanding between the ministries of health of both countries which aim to deepen cooperation in the field of health and medical sciences. In addition, Sheikh Khaled and the president of the Italian space agency, Giorgio Sacosia, signed a letter of intent between Bahrain's National Space Science Agency and Italy's Space Agency on Civil Space Cooperation for peaceful purposes. The Minister of Foreign Affairs stressed that these agreements reflect the joint desire to further strengthen cooperation to the mutual benefits of both countries and their people. Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Minister of Oil and Chairman of Tatwir Petroleum and the CEO of Italian oil and gas company ENI, Claudio Discalzi, signed an agreement to explore new areas for collaboration during a high level visit to the Italian Republic led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The agreement will facilitate joint assessments as well as the launch of new initiatives in areas of mutual interest, including renewable energy the supply of exploration of liquefied natural gas. Sheikh Mohammed said that the visit is intended to expand investment opportunities in the energy sector and underline the benefits of the exchange of expertise in that regard. He highlighted the close ties between ANI and the National Oil and Gas Authority, noting their collaborative efforts to have helped develop Bahrain's petroleum industry. The Gulf Petrochemical Industries Company signed an agreement with the Italian oil field services company SAPEM to study the visibility of various projects in Bahrain on the sidelines of the visit of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince's visit to Italy. In a statement to mark the occasion, the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, expressed the support of the National Oil and Gas Authority to all its subsidiary companies, noting their contribution to the development and sustainability of the Bahraini economy and of foreign investments to the kingdom. The minister highlighted that the strategy for Bahrain's oil and gas sector is in line with the kingdom's comprehensive development goals led by His Majesty the King and received the continuous support of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The Minister of Oil highlighted JEPIC's proven excellence in production and marketing, adding that the company's expansion projects have the full support of both the government and shareholders. The Minister of Oil added that the agreement signed with the SAPEM will enhance JEPIC's ability to increase production, expanding its contribution to the kingdom's economy in line with the directives of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince. 
For his part, the president of JPEC, Abdurrahman Jawahri, has highlighted that the agreement is part of the strengthening of economic relations between Bahrain and Italy in line with JPEC's strategy expansion plans. Jawahiri expressed his appreciation for His Royal Highness's support to JPEC's expansion plans and went on to explain that the agreement includes studies for three projects. The agreement between JPEC and SAPEM is consistent with the directives of Bahrain's government to develop and modernize its oil sector and the petrochemical industry. The National Oil and Gas Authority, led by the Minister of Oil, is making significant efforts to support JPEC's projects, including or included by enhancing cooperation with regional and international partners while maximizing the benefits provided by the government. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, took part in an official dedication visit to Italy led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. During the visit, the Minister affirmed that the delegation will seek to broaden Bahraini Italian business relations beyond traditional areas and deepen the engagement of Bahrain's private sector with the global market. The Minister welcomed the wide range of agreements signed between the private sectors of both countries, worth around 330 million euros, noting that economic ties form a key pillar for Bahraini Italian cooperation, which continues to grow as trade between the two countries reaches new heights. He also highlighted the strength of the kingdom's national economy, noting that ongoing diversification efforts have increased productivity and competitiveness while creating quality opportunities in line with the principles enshrined in Bahrain's economic vision 2030. The minister concluded by underscoring innovative Bahraini entrepreneurship activities that continue to reshape the economy and accelerate technological advancement. The, ministry, uh, the Minister of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning Engineer Islam Khalaf received at his office the UAE's Minister of State for Food Security, Maryam Saeed Harb al Mahiri, establishing a new Bahraini Emirati cooperation to support achieving food security. More on this report with Hib Abdel Ghaffar. A new strategic partnership between the Kingdom of Bahrain and the UAE was established today to support food security efforts. The Minister of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning stressed the significance of the food security file following the royal directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to implement a strategic project for national production aiming to develop national capabilities and enhance local production. He welcomed in this regard cooperation with the UEE, seeking to benefit from its successful experiences in this field. Today, this is uh, a very important issue uh, and we look forward uh, through uh, uh, such uh, visits and such uh, uh, cooperation between the two countries that we learn uh, from these experiences in order that we uh, bridge the gap between in the uh, the actual demand uh, and the uh, and the local uh, production in the field of uh, fisheries and uh, agriculture UAE's Minister of State for Food Security affirmed the keenness of the UAE to establish this partnership with the Kingdom of Bahrain and highlighted multiple areas of bilateral cooperation. Now in looking at how we can strengthen research and development in areas of uh, precision farming, in areas of uh, closed system farming, in areas of um, aquaculture, for example, how we can increase uh, fish um, uh, fish production in the UAE and in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Uh, we looked at th things of how we can increase national capacity. Um, the area of food security is quite special in that we need to really build on specific capacity on the different areas. So there's not just the growing of the food, there's also the nutritional aspect, there's also the food loss and food waste. Uh, across the food supply chain, there are so many areas that we need to focus on and look at how we can strengthen the capacities. The meeting was attended by the Under Secretary for Agriculture and Marine Resources, Dr. Nabil Mohammed Abul Fatah, and the Under Secretary for Animal Resources, Dr. Khaled Ahmed, and the Assistant Under Secretary for Agricultural Affairs, Dr. Abdul Aziz Mohammed Abdul Karim, and a number of ministry officials. Signing a new agreement here today between Bahrain and the UAE in the field of food security is another milestone, strengthening the cooperation between the two brotherly countries to achieve the highest quality standards. Heba Abdel Ghaffar, Bahrain International. 
The National Export Promotion Agency, Export Bahrain, signed an agreement with the Italian Export Credit Agency, Space SPA, to increase exports between the two countries. Under the agreement, Export Bahrain and Space SPA agreed to exchange information on business opportunities to further promote exports, including utilizing the exchange of knowledge to aid capacity building. The Minister of Industry, Commerce and Tourism, the SME Development Council Chairman Zaid Zayani, and Managing Director and Head of International Business business of states SPA Michael Ron or Michel Ron signed the agreement during his Royal Highness the Crown Prince's official visit to Italy. The agreement will create promising growth opportunities for Bahrainis and Italians alike by expanding SME's global market reach and spurring job creation. Export Bahrain brings together resources from local and international partners to further strengthen SME's international sales strategies and their ability to compete in the global market. Export Bahrain continues to support the expansion of non oil exports by broadening the range of business development services on offer to include export financing, export credit insurance, export shipment solutions, market intelligence, business to business facilitation, deal support and advisory services. The capital governor, Sheikh Hisham bin Abdurrahman Al Khalifa, and the Ministry of Health reviewed uh, the efforts exerted to implement the criteria for the entitlement of the capital Manama to be named a healthy city in the presence of the World Health Organization experts who will evaluate Manama's file to win the title. The capital governor affirmed that the government and Ministry of Health's adoption of the Manama Health City program strengthens social connections and establishes an environmentally friendly and health promoting infrastructure through a sustainable development program that adopts international standards for healthy cities. He expressed aspirations that Manama wins the title of healthy city this year. The capital governor added that the Minister of Interior, General uh, Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, directed to promote the program in the governance of the kingdom to be applied in various cities. The ambassador of Bahrain to the United Kingdom, Sheikh Fawaz bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, held a reception ceremony and a lunch banquet in London on the occasion of the 52nd anniversary of the BDF establishment in the presence of officials concerned with defense affairs, a number of MPs, lords and officials at the UK Foreign Affairs and Defense Ministries. The ambassador noted the importance of the occasion of establishing Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF, which was the idea of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and stemmed from his keenness on developing it to keep up with military developments. He also noted the importance of cooperation and partnership between Bahrain and the UK. The chairman of the Defence Committee in the British Parliament and former Defence Minister Elwood Tobias delivered a speech in which he congratulated the Kingdom on the occasion, noting the UK's pride in the joint cooperation and leading strategic relations between the two countries. The advisor to the British Ministry of Defence, Simon Mayall, also delivered a speech in which he noted the friendly ties between Bahrain and the UK and reviewed the history of cooperation in the field of defense. The chairman of Bahrain British Friendship Society, Brigadier Peter Zinkok, expressed pride in the development achieved by the BDF in the 52nd anniversary of its establishment and His Majesty's leading role in its establishment, wishing the kingdom further progress and prosperity. One of the really important parts of the relationship is this very long-standing defense relationship great on this day when we're celebrating the anniversary of the setting up of the Bahrain Defence Force um, to hear the stories people are talking about, how it was set up, the relationship there's been over many, many decades. And it's as important, more, more important today than it's ever been. And so I think what you're sensing here is a real commitment to build on this and make it closer still. I'm very honoured to have been invited here today. Um, and I was with His Majesty, uh, we, were, we trained as officer cadets together and I have known His Majesty for over 50 years so His Majesty and I share the same anniversary as the Bahraini Defence Forces and I think it's wonderful to see the way that they've grown and prospered and in fact last week I was in Bahrain and had a, an audience with the Commander-in-Chief and a very interesting discussion and a presentation on the scale of the BDF now, which is great, much bigger than I had originally mem remembered it to be. Uh, and I think it's, it's got a, a very good reputation, it's got very smart soldiers, they're very well found, they're very well, uh, very well equipped, I think your equipment is excellent. 
and I think uh, the people of Bahrain can be very proud of their defence forces and their capability. And I know they've been on operations in the Yemen. Um, you know, they're not just soldiers for standing around. They have made a very positive contribution. So it's a pleasure to be here, to be with His Excellency Sheikh Fawaz, and who was also at Sandhurst at the Royal Military Academy, and many other people here from the military and from the Foreign Office, uh, ex-members of Parliament, current members of Parliament, all come to pay tribute to the work of the Bahrain Defence Forces. Well, it's a great pleasure to be able to join you on this day and to mark not only our friendship but the very close relationship between the British military and the Bahraini Defence Force which I saw as uh, Defence Secretary in action and played a crucial part of course of the work that we're all doing in the Gulf to try and uh, restore some stability particularly in the battle against uh, terrorism and the need to reassure our our various allies. There is no closer military relationship than between our military and uh, the military of Bahrain. And you've seen that with the opening of the naval base. You also saw that with our very close cooperation in the fight against the Daesh and the continuing exchange now of personnel between Bahrain and our own defence colleges. It's a great relationship, it's close, and I hope it always will be. The King Hamad Global Center for Peaceful Coexistence, represented by its chairman of its board of directors, Dr. Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, and the second deputy chairman of the board of trustees and president of This Is Bahrain, Ms. Betsy Matheson, participated in the roundtable discussions on international religious for freedom in Washington, D.C., headed by the U.S. Ambassador for International Religious Freedom, Sam Brownback, in the presence of members of the roundtable, in addition to the participation of senior religious leaders academics and members of the U.S. Senate. The Ambassador for International Religious Freedom hailed Bahrain's efforts to establish the pillars of peaceful coexistence and granting a religious or religions their full rights and freedoms to worship. They hailed His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's vision to make peaceful coexistence and religious freedom a sustainable approach locally, regionally and internationally. The participants expressed their appreciation to the Kingdom and the King Hamad Global Center for organizing the roundtable discussions held in Manama recently after announcing Bahrain to be a headquarters for international roundtables for the Middle East and North Africa. They also reviewed the, the experience of religious minorities who suffer from persecution and abuse such as Iran, Kenya, Sudan, Nigeria, Cuba, North Korea and China. The roundtable condemned many practices against Christians specifically in some countries with several proposals and solutions to address them and imposing penalties to criminalize those who commit these uh, dishonorable acts. The King Hamad Global Center denounced any practices against religious freedom that violate the dignity of humanity because of race religion or sect stressing that uh, this is the core goal of the center to embody the Bahraini in this field. Sheikh Khalid bin Khalifa stated that Bahrain has succeeded in transforming into an exceptional regional and global platform for peaceful coexistence thanks to the royal vision in creating a fertile environment for sustainable development supported by legislation and laws that encourage acceptance of the other party. Sheikh Khalid affirmed the center's keenness to participate in the international roundtables on religious freedom stems from the kingdom's commitment to transfer its pioneering experience to all parts of the world to spread peace and harmony. He revealed that the center is in the process of hosting the next international roundtable on religious freedom in the second quarter of the year 2020 in Manama. The aluminum Bahrain Alba took part in a high-level Bahrain delegation to Italy led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince. The Bahrain delegation visited Italy to explore further expansion and partnership opportunities with Italian-based companies through high-level meetings between senior business executives and government representatives. As part of the delegation, Alba's chairman of the board of directors, Sheikh Daej bin Salman Al Khalifa, met with key Italian companies including Florisad, Fata and Tech car which were important agreements were signed uh, to advance commercial opportunities for both parties commenting on the occasion Sheikh Daej expressed his uh, pleasure for being a part of the Bahrain delegation to Italy led by his royal highness the crown prince and that Alba is deeply committed to uh, realizing the kingdom's economic vision 2030 of which he said signing the agreements is a part of 
Gulf Air announced its plans to begin operating a year-round daily non-stop service between Bahrain International Airport and Milan Melpensa Airport in Milan, Italy, starting from July 2020. The announcement was made during a business lunch organized by the Bahrain Economic Development Board and is a part of the Gulf Air's expansion strategy and coincides with the official opening of Bahrain's embassy in Rome. Gulf Air also announced that it will begin operating its first Airbus A321neo aircraft serving a number of European destinations, including Milan. The new aircrafts will feature flatbed seats and a state-of-the-art in-flight entertainment system.